today we have the Svato look from the uh, um, Greens from Shanghai University. Yes. And he should give a talk on this complex in symplectic geometry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. So the aim is to study Hilbert bundles on compact manifolds and also to uh, uh, to give an example, a specific example of these bundles. So I will try to do it in the case of symplectic manifolds and so-called segal shell representations, which should which are analogs to the Penrose's constructions of twistors in orthogonal and pseudo Riemannian geometry. So, or playing ground from the point of symmetry. Are the symplectic uh, is the symplectic group, which is the symmetry of the standard uh, symplectic space. So I will write at the beginning more, and then we will see what can be formulated and set in addition. So to this uh, symplectic group, we consider it's double cover, connected double cover. Which is called metaplectic. It is unique up to deck transformation and choice of unity in this SP, which is rather technical detail, which we can uh, neglect yet and this double cover as a distinguished representation, which is parallel to the spinor representation, takes um, the metaplectic group acts <clears throat> on a square Lebesgue integrable functions. Uh, 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 I I don't know. It there is there is if uh, there is either one and minus one. I cannot check minus one. It is also minus one. And that means uh, two, point, yeah? two points. Yeah. So that is a simply connected. That's the unit. Yeah. Uh, it, this is not simply connected. No, that's a, a... And this is also not simply so, connected. Uh, it is connected. Uh, two list two uh, two leaf uh, cover. So, so what is center? Because the center is a. I guess. I think. The universal covering is. There are these two two elements. Yeah. Min one and minus one. It should be discrete. The center, if the group is uh, on the other hand sim uh, simple. If the, if the group is simple, the center should be by definition uh, discrete. Yeah, so I just okay. taking this from uh, theorems, and here you certainly can have four. You have four in the center, so okay. which is somehow this is uh, the SP. Maybe it's good. Uh, it's good to say the SP group. Uh, what is the maximal compact to which one can shrink the non-compact part? And this is the UN, yeah, yes, sure. because of simple computation yes. by SO, two, two, two out three uh, rule. And U has a circle, as far as I remember, yes. and it is Z, the, homo the fundamental group is, or uh, homotopy group is Z. And uh, <clears throat> this means uh, that uh, this is not simply connected. Right. It should be a spiral, uh, spiral in order to be simply connected. So two, um, Leaves. No, I will write two fold it. Sorry for that. Two fold it's more sure. <clears throat> so uh, we would like to, to mimic the spinor construction. Yeah? So the construction of spinor representation. It depends from where you know it, but one there exists this rep, uh, some unitary representation of this Hilbert space. And uh, the uh, 
Hilbert space of R, Rn. R2n uh, decomposes in this way. This should be isotropic decomposition with respect to omega. So you take a half of it, then you take L2. Why L2? I will explain. Yeah. It is parallel to some construction for Clifford algebras, which you maybe can know from Dirac operators and spin groups. So this representation, I will not define it. Uh, this, uh, the prescriptions are quite uh, technical. Uh, it was discovered by Andre Weil uh, in connection to number theory and also by Shale who was a physicist studying by Siegel. So Siegel, this, this abbreviates Siegel, Shale, and Weil. Uh, so when, when did they discover this? 67. But I think for Shale. I mean, this representation is was known to Schrodinger. No, it is not the Schrodinger one. But it is maybe it was known, but it is not the Schrodinger one. I mean... Uh, Schrodinger should be a representation of... XDDX? You know, they obey the... It is intertwiner, uh, so you, you know it. Uh, maybe it can... Uh, this is quite uh, intricate. Uh, it is this representation of, of MP is constructed by intertwiners, by equivariant maps acting between the Schrodinger representation of the Heisenberg group. So it's different from the Schrodinger representation. So Schrodinger, according to my uh, definitions, you can find it in many books, uh, also in form. It's a classical mm -hmm. analytical uh, approach to it. Mm, is that uh, Schrodinger is a representation of Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. On the level of algebra, it really represents uh, the, Heisenberg is R2 n plus one, a group on R2 n plus one. And the first are positions, they are represented by multiplication mm -hmm. by the same variable. Mm -hmm. QI is represented by XI, multiplication of XI. And the next N are uh, represented by differentiation. Mm -hmm. Time is represented by, I know, uh, by some constant multiple. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the differentiation of the Schrodinger representation. Mm -hmm. You must take exponential of this representation to get to real to unitary group. Yeah. And then you take all the possible intertwiners by the Stone von Neumann, all of these uh, Schrodinger representations, which can differ by the action of center, are conjugated, are equivalent. And this equivalence making intertwiners are, are used for construction of this representation of rho. So they, they are parameterized by symplectic group, which acts on the Heisenberg R2 n plus one. So the, the action so of the group uh, is by, uh, by conjugation, like a joint action on these intertwiners? The action, you don't act on the intertwiners. The intertwiners act on the end. representation. All right, okay. Anyway, so it's not just the shooting. Okay, <laughs> it is not, yeah. So, bail. and uh, Siegel, Siegel dissertation. So you have a representation of Heisenberg group. Many of them, you have many representations and the intertwiners uh, are uh, realizing this representation. It's really not easy construction, yeah, so it was, I, I, we cannot go into details, yeah. So Andre Weil, uh, Sir Setan group des opérateurs unitaire. A Siegel, it's about the symmetries of Klein Gordon field. Uh, Klein, Klein Gordon fields, I don't know the name of the article. It was Shale. Dissertation of Shale, Transactions of Mathematics 64. Uh, yeah, it can be. There are many choices, therefore I didn't uh, define the representation. There are many choices. 
for example, but it's maybe interesting to say that this element, it is known, it can be checked easily that it is in SP. It has two pre-images because this is two-folded covering in MP. And uh, these two pre-images mapped by this row, acting by this row, by Fourier transform on this, for example. So two simple, almost symplectic forms are acting by Fourier's on function, which is quite interesting. <laughs> this example of one represent a representation of one or two elements of the group. So there are much more formulas for this. Uh, sorry, and where we were, yeah. I continue to say some uh, some details about this representation briefly. So what is well known from analysis of analysis, uh, L2 functions or uh, Schwartz functions, rapidly decreasing functions are densely embedded into integrable functions. This has polynomials, these Schwartz functions, rapidly decreasing means that they are decreasing quickly than any polynomial. Schwartz. Yes. Then we can take polynomials complex valued polynomials, multiply them by the exponential, by this Gaussian type exponential and embed it into Schwartz. It is, this is rapidly decreasing because of the, seeing the exponential as decaying wave. So the Gaussian also. This is what, this is nothing, but this is trivial mathematically. The symmetric algebra on CN, so I take complex polynomials, times the same exponential. And you can remember that uh, classical spinors can be realized in exterior, in the exterior power. So SO2N spinors, R2N, what one can do, it is one of the possible constructions, but it uh, uh, really reminds us to what I, it can remind us what I wrote just now. Complexification is this, I take splitting with respect to complexified bilinear form, and then spinors decomposes into two uh, irreducible sub-representations with respect to S, O, N, C. And this is as a vector space. This space is as vector space equivalent to the exterior uh, vector of space of this. So these are the analogies by anti-symmetric and uh, symmetric. Power. So this is the analogy of the space, not of the representation, but of the, only of the underlying vector space. So this representation, the segal veil representation, decomposes also into two irreducible subspaces. They are easily realized. H plus R are even functions representable by even functions, L2 by representable by even and odd, odd uh, functions. So this is one analogy between them, yeah. the symmetricity and anti-symmetricity, which you can see without uh, defining the representation actually because of L2 is something like <coughs> polynomials times exponential densely embedded. Then a further analogy is what we have. We have the representation, we write it just 
you write it just uh, in this way. We have covering, which we call lambda. I didn't write it. Then we have the representation, and this representation row doesn't lift to a uh, factorize, doesn't lift to a representation of the sympathy group itself. So this doesn't uh, exist for uh, so, uh, continuous and so on. Continuous, it doesn't exist for sure. Yeah, there are further analogies regarding the highest weights of this. I one can compute choose Cartan algebra, uh, compute uh, roots, compute the roots, uh, taking the positive uh, functional, taking positive roots, taking simple roots, and then according some basis in the simple roots, the highest weights of this representation is one over two, one over two, one over two, one over two. And the second one, one over two, one over two, minus one over two. So they have half spin weights. The position is with respect to the meta. Met, yeah, with the meta practic. <clears throat> this is also with respect to this. And there is highest weights analogy, which we don't. Uh, mention maybe later yeah. so this is the plain growth two groups one representation this formulas i can say not only reference to the articles but maybe to volach on uh, the book on symplectic uh, geometry symplectic analysis volach volach yeah. no uh, from us yeah, yeah. no no lana and he wrote a book on symplectic analysis and the construction is there done for a really very basic construction but on several pages it's old from uh, 80s 90s so i know we would like to not move to the, the geometric side but to go to the geometric side there yeah. so what one can do one can do associated bundles induced bundles and so on so i don't know how do how the audience know it so it's fairly classical but uh, technical as well so it's not here so we start with uh, symplectic manifold then we construct in each point bundle of symplectic bases not orthogonal but symplectic and then we take any bundle p of this bundle q uh, which is a double cover of this bundle q on and on which the metaplectic group acts such that this diagram this diagram is compatible so this is the covering of these two principal bundle spaces lambda big lambda Metaplectic is a covering of symplectic. This is this small lambda. This is the action on bases, on repairs. And we should have such a principal bundle so that this commute, this is the action of the metaplectic on it. You can choose the action of the metaplectic on it, such, but such that this commutes. So the, uh, this is discovering lambda you can you must choose as well and these are let's say canonical maps this is you can choose also uh, you cannot choose them yeah so for each uh, bundle over a point you must put it to a point to the same point yeah, okay so this is symplectic bundle bases this is a bundle of symplectic uh, bases this is the bundle of metaplectic bases and to this you can associate via row this representation this fiber this space as a 
fibrous speaking, like in algebraic geometry. Then, yeah, this is a Costant and Habermann construction. Bertan Costant, 80s, in the 80s, developed this construction. Forger has found uh, that the topological obstructions are the same as spin in spinor geometry, orthogonal spinor geometry. So this uh, chain classes or vanishing of second Stiefel with near uh, first chain should be uh, embedded uh, trivial uh, even in uh, in the Z cohomology class yeah. of H2 of the second cohomology. Then what can what can one do? One can take exterior forms on the manifold and twist it by these spinors. Yeah. So usually one twists by line bundles, but we can twist or by something finite dimensional. And we try, I, and I try to twist by these spinors. So it's what uh, you said about the uh, uh, spinner structures or spin structures on, on the manifold that there might still be uh, obstructions uh, in this metaplectic representation bundle. Mm -hmm. So are they uh, uh, analogous to to obstructions to to yeah, the same. Or they're the same. They're exactly the same. same. So if... I can give the references later. Yeah, yeah, Forger okay. has should be the original result who detected it. These uh, obstructions are the same. Okay. Right. Thanks. I don't know whether by seal of groups or further things, but uh, it uh, it is there in the article. <clears throat> so this shall be some infinite dimension. This is an infinite dimensional bundle. You would like to take connection, associate to it to forms, and then analyze images and kernels of these operators, of these exterior covariant derivatives and projections on that. This will define the twistors, some sub bundles of this. These bundles have the disadvantage that they usually with induced connection don't form complexes. They are curvature ops without this typical curvature. Yeah. So this is uh, a differential geometric setting. Yeah, maybe to the twister bundles. Uh, I should say more about the sub bundles. So this uh, forms with values in spinors. Spin, spin uh, forms time spinners uh, will have sub bundles. They are defined by such by some uh, linear operator, which is given here. The formula will I will explain the formula. Then yeah. So this is all. I I must go into the twister subbundles to say something more about them now, before I go to the uh, representation theory back. So tau e tau i sorry tau i should be a subbundle of these i forms in spinors, these values in spinors or times spinors. They are defined by an operator which takes form times spinor. Yes. And it acts as omega ij, which is the coordinate expression for the omega, the inverse of the omega, as seen as endomorphism, seen as en endomorphism. Contraction by this, sorry, just a second, yes. So it means that it's a thick yeah. Yeah. This this will be set uh, later. I will tell I will tell about it yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. So this I omitted that we want operators on such infinite dimensional bundles which we want to investigate. Yeah. So. So at the moment we don't have it. So the problem is uh, how to say uh, we have the family of the operator. Yeah. It's. it's uh, that's not depend on the choice of the operator, right? It would be great, yeah. But uh, I think I think uh, uh, there are, there are some uh, further. I'm not into in, into it. Yeah, there are some further approaches of uh, Kahn, Good, and further people from Belgium who are searching for uh, 
minimizers on these connections in some certain classes of Ricci type, uh, minimizing some energy and so on. Yeah. I haven't, I don't, I haven't seen it. Yeah. So for me, uh, the representation theory can be an invariant. Yeah, so. Yes, yeah, so, but now we try to propose some program. Yeah, yeah, so it is something like a, a program. So this is important. This is uh, omega ij omega. Once more, one must be careful or to know it perfectly. Uh, yeah, no, J, yeah, okay, J. It is J is delta I K. This is the definition of this op, uh, omega K J. Omega I J is, I will, for completeness, add this information. Omega is on the manifold, the chosen one. And this is the contraction insertion of e, e j into alpha and this is the so-called symplectic spinner multiplication which is uh, d s d x i or e d or e x i s uh, s x yeah. so no where I am, it is certainly wrong. E is, uh, I is one to N, and here is I is times N plus one to N in this notation. So I must shift the index, uh, E minus N. Think of it as a, we have functions on R to N in the flat case, R to N. And if we act by the first n tuples, we differentiate. If we act by the further n tuples, we take a multiple with respect to this coordinate. You know, this is not power. This is not, I think that it is a power and it is a number of the coordinate. So it is like the quantization prescription is here. Symplectic coordinate. Yes, and symplectic R two N with this symplectic adapted core. Yeah, and it, it works for every every, and it is MP invariant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, interesting uh, for us, you no, know, uh, just from the physical point of view, because it may remind us to quantization procedure of canonical quantization, but it has uh, for sure this uh, invariant meaning, uh, equivariant feature, equivalent feature. Yeah, so I wanted just to define uh, this operator. Yeah, so it is defined in this way. It is invariant with respect to the action of the metaplectic group on the spinors and on the forms by the covering. And then <clears throat> what to say further? Yeah, the twister, the twister bundle is nothing but the kernel of this I, when it acts, I must add this strange index. So when we act, let it act on the I forms, it defines the I's bundle. It is this uh, I's forms times uh, I, uh, times H. The I can act, formality, I would like to, uh, define this uh, this i, and this is defined as y acting on these forms and taking the pre image. Now we must go back to the representation theory briefly uh, and try to uh, find out what we found. Well, what is what what is this twister bundle in representation theory? So you have a display in no, I am not visible. Yeah. No, uh -huh. okay, yes, okay. 
So now we would like to find these twistor bundles uh, in a representation theory to say how they are, whether they are associated bundles for some representations. Actually, they must be because why is this operator why is equivalent? So they should be. I cannot say it uh, with respect to all analytical details because we didn't check that why is continuous and so on. So we and just and they cannot know it sometimes so iterated positions of y Uh, this question doesn't have meaning for me. Yeah, so I can iterate why on. Uh, there, are, I know the answer. There are either isomorphisms or zero vector spaces or zero. There are either linear isomorphisms or zero. I will I will present it uh, now. Maybe it will be. Good to cut it a bit, the talk. It's really not easy to say all these notions. Representation theory. Back, back to that. We don't need to, we don't need uh, to consider this bundle situation. We can start with the vector spaces and representation theoretical data. So we can take this. This is on the side of the, let's say, models. And this uh, acted upon MP to an R okay. by row I G on form times spinor is just row G on alpha and lambda G, no, vice versa. Vice versa, I cannot act by uh, in this way. So lambda G, G is from metaplectic, lambda G is from symplectic. It means that now I am acting on the vector space by symplectic element on R2N. G, uh, lambda G is from, lambda G is from SP to an R. SP to an R. So, Lambda G acts in this way. Uh, so one should. A lambda is the covering. I didn't write it. Lambda is here. So I go from a metaplectic to symplectic. Uh, I see. And symplectic okay. it's endomorphism. Then I take yeah. exterior. Then I take exterior form. Uh, I take it wedge i time, and I should or shouldn't take the dual because R two n and R two n dual are isomorphic via omega transformation via omega duality. I can take it. I can write it for sure. It's just notational. Problem or um, yeah. So how do we act on form with values in spinors? This is classical uh, for people doing representation theory, but sometimes one can make a, a mistake. So by this, it is no Leibniz rule that it would be for algebra. So it would be active. Okay, so this is the definition. 
So the representation, we have a representation of a metaplectic group on this forms time spinors by this, and this we know how it decomposes. This is computable by uh, Bernstein for Bernstein and Janssen formulas, generalizing clinic formulas for tensor products. And it, I will display just a typical example. I have description uh, by some micro, uh, some very small weights, one over two, but detail, very detailed formulas, and I will omit it here. The detail, uh, detail formulas. So let us fix n is the dimension of the manifold is six. The spinors itself decomposes in this way. R to n times h plus minus decomposes into two pieces, which we denote in this way. Now we have what two forms. Yeah. So two forms, I can write out the dual or it's not necessary because of the identification with uh, by omega, omega. This is just notation. It stops. The decomposition regarding the number of its elements stops to increase in the middle and then it goes back. So there are only three, two, and one. No, I, I add just these uh, plus minuses. And so it has such a structure. It decomposes into two irreducibles, three irreducibles, four irreducibles, and then it goes back. This is um, uh, number three and manifold uh, dimension. Or which number? How do they number? How do I number it? Number, seven. Okay. It's, it's yeah, seven. the first number in H. Here. In the spinner case, uh, when you multiply forms by spinners or any tensors by by spinners, yeah. you would uh, to uh, to actually identify these uh, this in, in very uh, irreducible decomposition. You would. Uh, I think that I, I can identify them. Uh, um really how i want i don't need that it is multiplicity freeness if you mind that no i understand it but, then... be, but it's nicer the formulas are more uh computable sure but i can, I can use sure to compute the, 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 the point i was going to make is that uh, you you can use uh invariant uh, structures like uh, gamma matrices and and the metric mm -hmm. to uh, contract indices in various ways and that's how you uh, you can decompose into these representations. Is that, is that the same thing that you do in the no, I, I use case? the representation theoretical results to the composant, and then I've been producing the projections onto them. But the, the projections to explicitly produce them, like do you use some analog of uh, gamma matrices and uh, like index contractions, something like that? Yes, yes. I wanted to come to that uh, in this talk. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, so. Oh. We know we know the the highest weights of these modules which characterize them. What is uh, good to know that in the columns, none of the irreducible uh, component is isomorphic to each other. So this is not isomorphic to this with plus with minus this with minus two to this and so on. So this is multiplicity free. And here, 
it is isomorphic. Everything here is isomorphic. Everything here is isomorphic. Everything here is isomorphic. Yeah. So uh, it's um, so it's everything what I say about the weights. So, may I ask a question here? So let us try to check if there exists some uh, theory to make the invariant using this thing. Yeah? So you begin with dimension six, but I'm very, how to say, modest. I want to begin with dimension two. Yeah. yeah. So this dimension two, then what is that? That means that uh, you, if you fix the even uh, closer surface, yeah. then the symplectic structure is the one in the one of the only how to say, uh, volume form, right? Yes. That means a positive from the... And then you, if I understand well, you, you don't, you cannot produce almost any complex. Uh, I don't have any complex structure. I mean, that of course I can use, but I, mm. mean, that I don't want to use any other theory. Yeah. I just try to see your theory, how it works. Yeah. And then I have the set of the kind of the positive function, right? And then that means you have okay. the invariant for so. positive function up to uh, the end of the concept. Acting on the, the complex model to so, and then by uh, more the current or complex uh, the equivalent uh, if uh, they have the same form. So that's uh, actually that's a unit up to up to homotopy class. Uh, more there, more there, right? So the theory, the theory is to compute how how this this uh, how this animal uh, depends on the symplectic structure and on the connection. Yes, so, so, so you have to show some connections, special connections. In this case, yes, yeah. In the symplectic case, you are right. Yes. Originally, I was interested in the contact projective, where it's only one, and I moved to it because of ellipticity. Uh, speaking aside, things. Yeah, this is probably the problem. Yeah, but uh, actually, this is this uh, for me uh, as a former physicist. This can be much more bigger problem only to divide because uh, the resulting space, if it is infinite dimensional, what happens if it is? Uh, L two over Schwartz, which is not, which is not uh, then, which is that, which is not closed, which is not, uh, which is not closed in L two. This is known Hausdorff, infinite dimensional Hausdorff. As a linear space, it's okay. It maybe it is isomorphic to the space of all sequences. So as a linear algebraic object, this can be, this is useless invariant. So one should take this, maybe. Uh, but this uh, has problems uh, with representation, with Hodge theory representing by, uh, uh, by kernels of Laplacians. So fair thing is even to study uh, the closeness of these things. Yeah. So this is the answer regarding the uh, the invariant. This can be the invariant, but this is very oddly different. This can be non-Hausdorff. T will be uh -huh. T is uh, the op operator. Induced by the covariant uh, derivative, induced by the chosen by a chosen Fedosov connection. I will write it now in the notation I introduced. Yeah? So the twister operators exit on this, and it is defined as uh, was taught. By one, uh, mm, and here is the projection. The twistors are actually identified. The twistors spaces are identified here. 
the y acts from here this to this so and here it must be an isomorphism this answers your question and this goes to zero because there's nothing this goes to zero so there are zero forms and this goes to zero so and here you find the twisters by weights by representation theory by highest weights so here is Fedos of uh, symplectic connection with autor a uh, symplectic connection with autorgen. Uh, it is you take its action on the uh, spinors, symplectic spinors, on exterior forms with values in symplectic spinor, and you take restriction, but it is not restriction, I call it in this spec. And then the projection. So it it goes from here to here, from here to here. According to this notation, I only loosely diagrammatically introduced these notation aj, where it's very bad. It's non a bit non-mathematical. I can introduce it precisely by giving the weights. This has <clears throat> two one over two and uh, n minus two minus one over two highest weights in epsilon basis uh, by given by fundamental weight. What's the other thing that you mentioned? You say that the um, in general cases, you have that the linear space of the infinite dimensional linear space yes. formation, right? Mm -hmm. So did you consider how the chain of the deformation of the formation leads to some uh, deformation? No, by no means it was not uh, my problem yet. Because uh, already the definition of the cohomology is a problem. Okay. Yeah, it is a problem of the definition of the cohomology. Uh, there are infinite dimensional spaces which are linear isomorphic, but not topologically isomorphic. I can say most of them are such, which are topologically very different, but linearly they are isomorphic. And I cannot, uh, it doesn't have, uh, this has also meaning in physics, where it's, uh, the topology is unavoidable. If it is a space space, if it is space of some physicals. Uh, maybe, maybe mathematically it makes sense also to compare it only from the linear algebra point of view, these spaces. So I have this space, others, uh, different manifold, different omega, different nabla. And I compare these linear spaces, but I think if they are infinite dimension with countable basis, all must be isomorphic. And even with a continuous basis of uh, Hamel basis, uh, the Schwartz space is probably isomorphic to the space of L2 integrable functions. I don't know, but it linear isomorphic, it can be really non canonically really the same. So this is the program. We didn't get into details. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, and this, uh, I keep uh, a question mark. So that's a later that I know of um, might some uh, canonical choice, yeah. Also, not blah. Then you have the invariant of symmetric structure, but invariant, for example, you consider that the uh, people don't have to say. Uh, almost scalar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost scalar. Uh, you have certain things that you have that you make conversion, right? Because that's what is also a change in the language. So then, then uh, because I would say even define some invariant for almost might be interesting or not. I I am I'm not yet complete. I, I, I computed uh, killing symplectic killing analogs on sphere, then on plane. I didn't compute. Uh, yeah, I didn't compute Laplaces, but thank you, uh, Haberman. Probably you meant <laughs> Katarina Haberman computed kernels of uh, symplectic Laplacians on spheres on the on two sphere. And uh, she was not into whether the image is uh, closed, but she was, but uh, she computed the kernel. It is finite, it is not a finite dimension of vector space. So the operator is not Fred Holm from this point of view. It is uh, finitely generated over some algebra KH of compact operator on H. Sorry, so that. And then, um, I, I don't remember the result about the image, whether I can, I can probably, 
the image must be caused by the theory I use. Okay. So I developed. That's a different idea. So I studied how interesting. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. So, actually, your know, idea to let uh, get rid of on the problem and then uh, get something interesting. I don't know. I think uh, this is already the Hausdorffness, which I don't understand, uh, is the problem. In BRST, it should be a problem. There are approaches of Novikov which, and Shubain uh, about L2 cohomology, whether to close the image or not. I don't understand the uh, points of topology. So it is non, non geometric for sure at my stage. What can be interesting in this? Chain, trying to find really as you proposed probably uh, how it changes uh, if the omega is uh, changes within some homotopic uh, class or homology class how to change uh, how, when the connection yeah when the connection changes this can be uh, how also the met, when the metaplectic structure changes this is computed by katarina haberman for example how the Mm, symplectic Dirac operators which are induced by uh, symplectic connection changes if one changes uh, if one if one make different choose of the metaplectic uh, structure you can have more metaplectic structure they are measured by the first cohomology groups in with coefficients in z2 if i remember well and then uh, of the manifold only Huh. And you can you can have more metaplectic structures even, and how the Dirac changes, how the kernel changes, how the image changes. No. I know that there are also articles of uh, regarding to set to cohomologies of Schweitzer Cho, no, Yao, Yao Schweitzer cohomologies. I don't know whether it has sense to compare cohomologies uh, which don't have topology and they are, they must be almost all the time infinite dimensional. They are typically infinite dimensional. In algebraic geometry, a topology you see typically finite dimensional cohomology, Z2, R2, R3, but here we have, even on sphere, it is it must be L2R. Maybe it can be proved that no, and then it is a question whether it cannot be S S R, the Schwartz on R. And uh, it cannot be by um, it probably cannot be. Yeah, I think that it's actually uh, infinite dimensional, that is a lot working. Yes. But the quantum physics is I'm not the uh, uh, devil's advocate, yeah, but sorry. Actually, I'm the yeah. <laughs> Uh, you have to measure infinity somehow, yeah. For example, some uh, canonical another infinity yes. algebra or something because that's infinity, but finite and uh, then, um, what's it, round or something? Normed or something like that. Normed, probably, yeah. So here are the kernels, uh, here are the kernel on the sphere of the twist uh, of the Dirac is infinite dimensional, for example, by Habermann's result already. Oh, can you briefly uh, summarize what is the problem with just when you have this cohomology space? And if it happens to be non-Hausdorf, uh, take the kind of the, the, the simplest Hausdorf uh, quotient. So like you make it a smaller space. Uh, well, this cannot, then... you cannot, uh, this, this I find even more non-geometrical. Well, I mean, it's, it's a functorial operation. So you still make, you get an invariant, but you said it, there's some problem with uh, much re yeah, yeah, yeah. relation between yes. the cohomology and representation by so I some, cannot some solutions. There are strong indices that then I, I cannot compare it with the kernel of the associated Laplacian or the complex. Uh, but why not? I mean, the kernel of Laplacian will be a uh, host of space closed. Uh, uh, one can com No, 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 but uh, this if is too you, complicated to answer for me. Look, uh, this this a uh, straightforward like universal Hausdorff quotient. Uh, if you if you start with a topological vector space yeah. that you know is topological, satisfying all the axioms that you want, but it's not Hausdorff, then there's uh, kind of the the finest quotient that 
makes it Hausdorff. So that yes, but then uh, do I, all I, information I, I, I don't know without. I understand that if you divide by, if you take the closure, you do get something closer. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I think it's it's basically the same. But uh, then you it's, cannot. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. It's, Typical Hodge theory is that you can decompose sections into kernels, co-kernels, and kernels of kernel. I even don't know a kernel of Laplacian images and co-images, images of adjoints. And this is then lost. Or okay. if you take you can close images, you think. So I don't what think is so. lost is the uh, decomposition of uh, the ambient hmm. space. Into the kernel of the of the twister and the image of the homotopy. yeah this would be the Hodge theory yeah but uh, I mean if you take closures in the right places I don't see like how I mean it no, it's, you, you I don't know it's too complicated you can read of my proposals of Hodge theory in my habilitation what a Hodge ah. theory can be abstractly okay. And you can find it there. The, I don't mean images in categorical sense. I mean really images in set theoretical yeah, sense. Yeah, I understand. But I mean, you can take image closure of the image. And then that's... So <laughs> yeah, but then it's probably you need something different because then... The the operator. So could you uh, summarize and propose uh, some uh, mass promising question? That means promising that can, uh, can be sold or like to something. I would be very glad, but uh, I think uh, I don't have uh, ideas today uh, regarding big questions. No, not big questions. I can write it. To, to, uh, yeah. to explain. A proof that image of any elliptic operator on Hilbert bundle is closed on a compact manifold. <laughs> but it is true, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So is that how it related to this problem? It is related to that one doesn't need to take, take uh, closures. Yeah. Oh. Because this would be also somehow automatically closed. Yeah. Even elliptic or not. Because it's elliptic. Mm, well, it is elliptic. Uh, so you have the elliptic operator on your right. Yes. Mm -hmm. finished? Yes, I think I have more representation theory, but it's so detailed that. So, um, thank you very much. It's a perfect show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.